All right, guys, we are back, and I'd like to welcome to the show 15-year NFL veteran, University of California Berkeley graduate and product of St. Mary's High School in Oakland, a man who I've been blessed to have played against and also have built a friendship <laughs> with over the years, Mr. Lorenzo Alexander. So how you doing, bro? I'm doing good, brother. How you been doing out there? Man, I've been doing good. You know, it's uh, it's been a little smoky out here with a lot of wildfires going on, but, you know, other than that, yeah. can't complain. Family's good. How's the fam? Yeah, everybody's doing well. You know, I, I still got a lot of family in the Bay, and so they've told me about that, but nobody's been adversely impacted, you know, as far as any houses being in danger, but they talk about the smoke and all that stuff. But out here in Phoenix, where I'm currently living, family's good, you know, just getting back into the house from uh, coaches flag football and there ripping and running with the kids. So, uh, you know, things are good. Everybody's healthy, doing well, back in school. I'm doing a lot of things in retirement, and so I'm just excited about this next chapter as I've, you know, started to transition away from the game. So do you miss it? Honestly, I don't. Um, I think I miss, you miss the people. But yeah. as far as getting hit, you know, having to go out to practice, sore and beat up, you know, waking up on Mondays, being stressed out, you know, if you lose a game and what that means for playoff implications if guys get hurt or another team doesn't do well, I, I don't have to worry about any of that anymore. You you know, it's just about kind of relaxing, sitting back and really enjoying the game of football and kind of getting back to that essence, especially with my kids. Um, I just get to and, and watch it and kind of critique it. You know, I still love um, just the, the process, you know, so mm -hmm. breaking down film, seeing how guys develop, watching how people attack each other. All that stuff is still fun and intriguing for me. But all the physical stuff, all the, 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 the grind, nah, I'm good. I can pass on <laughs> <laughs> so I, I feel you, man. You know, I, I missed the game. Uh, and obviously I didn't I didn't go as far as you did, but I missed the game. You know, I missed the camaraderie that that part you can't right. take away. Right. Um, but, you know, waking up, waking up on a on a Sunday or waking up on a Monday and just being able to get right out of bed and not have to hop into the cold tub or anything like that or get treatment is always nice. Right. Exactly. man. And, that, and by the end of my career, I was probably treating more than practicing or playing or anything else. So it became more of a job in itself. And it took a lot of the love away from just because of all the extra yeah. stuff you had to do. Yeah. Yeah. So before before we get deep into this, uh, I know you got a score to settle with one of your former teammates about a playoff game that we played against in the high school together. Now, yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead. And I'll let you have the floor on this. Well, well, first of all, you guys won the game, so you know, <laughs> hats off to you guys. We weren't very good my senior year. Uh, we had some talent, but uh, you guys were just a better football team overall, so shout out to you guys. Um, but it's actually uh, a couple of teammates, and and this is, you know, I was getting in contact with you through uh, D. Free, Deshaun Freeman, uh, but the teammates were Tristan George and Chris Dunbar, running back and DB for our team that also were just elite athletes overall. Uh, Tristan and Dunbar were, you know, track stars on top of being football stars. And uh, I think Chris Dunbar went to the state in the 100 and the 2, did some of the relays. I know Tristan was doing some of the similar things, but he was more of a jumper, a triple jumper. And those are some of the best athletes that you will ever be around. And actually in your game, I don't know the young man that did it at the time, but one of your running backs towards the end of the game busted a run. And somehow, some way, all three of us was running after this guy at the same time. And given yeah. in high school, I was, you know, my senior year, I was probably 6'2", 270. These guys are track stars, elite, lean, fast. In some way, they, you know, we got the film to show it. I, I put it out there on my IG and stuff, Lorenzo underscore John. And you just see me outrun both of these guys. So one, it tells me either they don't have great effort or I'm just a great athlete. And so I, knowing those guys, I like to say the second option, that I'm just a superior athlete to, to Chris Gumbar and Tristan yeah. George. And so I remind them every time I see them, especially when I get back to the Bay and we do camps and stuff together and get back and kind of hang out. Yeah, you know, we talked about that uh, a lot when I was playing at Laney, uh, me and your boy House. You know, yeah, we, we, yeah. We, would, we would talk about that a lot. And House was like, man, he's like, my boy Zoe chased down your running back. I was like, yeah, he did. He, got, he even made you, you actually. <laughs> Our highlight video right, so you right. were on our highlight video that's how that's how impressive it was but you know we played we played that back over and over and over again and uh you know that was impressive to me but you know you know being being in the bay area we got a ton of talent out here and, and you know the, all over east bay oakland oakland's oakland's untapped talent you know there's a lot of talent right. out there that 
that a lot of people don't know about for, you know, for, for many reasons. Um, but, you know, as an Oakland native, what was it like when you came to the Raiders and, and what was that, you know, being a team in your backyard? Yeah, you know, I actually really enjoyed the experience. Um, I think what made it even what made it special was that I was older and mature um, in my career. Um, and what I mean by that, obviously, I had played, I think it might have been year uh, 12 or so, but I was married, I had kids, I was settled and comfortable in who I was, uh, because I think oftentimes, especially as a young player, a young guy that, you know, you go from college to the league and you end up some way playing in your hometown, you can have a lot of people still hanging on to you, because obviously you've yeah. been around, and Oakland is small, intimate, everybody knows everybody, everybody's your uncle or your cousin, yep. and so just the stresses of, of having to handle that when I was, you know, 22, 23, 24 would have been a much different experience than when I came in in 2015, as I said before, when I was mature, married, settled. And so it was just, we lived over in Alameda. Me and my wife got to see my mom all the time, my uncle, go up to some St. Mary's game, go up to Cal. And, and it was just a great experience, you know, because I grew up going to those games uh, with one of my boys, Omar Young, um, and his dad. Um, I was blessed to do that and used to go watch a lot of Raider games, even though I was a Niners fan. And so it was kind of cool for the first time to experience the black hole as, mm -hmm. as an open Raider. Um, and really have them on your side versus, you know, talking trash and flipping you <laughs> off and all that, coming yeah. in as an opponent. And so I, I, I really, really loved it. Got a chance to engage the community. Um, it, was, it was just a blessing all the way around, but I think mainly because I, I did it at a mature time in my life versus when I was younger, which would have might have been a lot more distractions going on. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that's a big thing is, you know, coming in, you you brought in a veteran leadership, you brought in that veteran presence uh, on a team that desperately needed it at that time. Um, you know, that, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, that you mentioned that about veteran leadership. Yeah. Uh, uh, man, so the coach at the time, uh, what's my man's name? He's in Washington now. Uh, Del, uh, Rio. Del Rio. Del Rio. So, you know, I, I came in, I actually had, I was in Arizona during um, training camp. And I got cut. The Raiders actually called um, uh, the special teams coach, uh, Seeley, Brad Seeley, called. I was like, man, what's going on? Zoe balled out. Is there something wrong with him? No, no, no. Everything is good. He's a good leader. We're just going in a different direction. So you talk about leadership. That actually got me into the door. And then when I was there, um, because I wasn't there in the offseason, they didn't really know who I was. Brad Seeley knew me for my special teams ability. So I was really there for special teams. Um, that's that was what my role was. But at some point later in the season, it was me and Ray Ray um, Armstrong, and they decided to let Ray Ray go. Um, and I remember vividly uh, warming up for practice, and Jack comes over to me and was like, hey, uh, I just want to let you know. And I guess I took it a certain type of way, <laughs> but it, it was definitely a, a compliment. He was like, yeah, we were thinking about letting you go, but we really appreciate the type of leader you are and what you bring to the locker room. And so even maybe from an ability standpoint or a schematic standpoint, they may not have liked me as much as Ray Ray, but they valued the leadership that I brought um, into the locker room. And that gave me the upper hand. And, and the reason why I just tell that story, because you know you may have some young athletes that are listening to this, and it just shows you, yes, yes, production and, and having ability matters, but at some point in your career, if you're either going to be equal, you're going to be like me, maybe starting to lose a little bit as you get older, and the person you are is going to elevate you to, to add more value to who you are as a player and what you can do in that locker room as a leader and to help young players. And so um, the whole person does matter when it comes to football. It's just not about scoring touchdowns and getting sacks. It is also about uh, the type of person you are on and off the field and what you bring and the type of energy you have every single day helping guys, leading guys, and doing things the right way. Yeah, no doubt. And, you, you know, you talked about the leadership aspect. You talked about, you know, you said that the one thing that stuck out to me was that you said that you started to decline later on in, in your career, and that was, what, year 12. But then you go to Buffalo, and you have, like, a career renaissance. You just, I mean, you completely yeah. transformed the game. You had 12.5 sacks that, that first year there, and you made the Pro Bowl for the first time. So what, what kind of led that charge? What it's all about opportunity. And yeah, and that was my first Pro Bowl on defense. I actually had went to the Pro Bowl in 2013 for special teams. But I got one I got to in between Washington and, and Oakland, I had a stop in Arizona where I actually tore my Liz Frank ligament. And mm. so that really set me back. So I signed a good deal, 
couldn't hold, hold up my end of the bargain because I was injured. So 13, I missed 13 games. 14, I was a shell of myself. And 15, I was starting to come out of it. And so even though I was I was progressing back to where I was, I still wasn't where I was should have been athletically. And so that's why I mentioned the character thing. And so right. by the time 16 happened, my body had a chance to heal. And my character gave me the opportunity to stay in the league long enough so I could return back to who I was as an athlete. Um, and so once I got to Buffalo, um, it really was just about opportunity. We had a guy, tears ACL. There was a guy that they, they decided to move on from, um, older, and they just, I guess, contract-wise. And so it kind of thrusted me into the starting role. And like a lot of guys in the league, guys can play. But whether you get drafted or you get a certain stigma placed on you, sometimes you get put into a box and you don't get the same type of opportunities as some of the other guys that make a lot of plays. And so you look at guys that get double digit sacks every year. They normally have, you know, nine to 900 to 1,000 reps to get 10 sacks. And then you ask, then you say, oh, well, this guy isn't good because he had three sacks. Well, he only rushed maybe 200 times. And so for me, I went from that 200 to that 900 and was able to go out there and showcase my talent take advantage of setting up a guy and beating him in the fourth quarter, uh, playing on first, second downs and stealing a couple on play actions, all those things that add up to being uh, considered an elite rusher. And so that's what it was just all about, finally getting that opportunity to really go out there and showcase for three downs. And that was on top of still playing uh, four core and special teams, you know, kickoff, punt, punt return. There wasn't <laughs> a lot of guys doing that either. So um, it was definitely a special year in all regards. Yeah, and you know the uh, that Bills team, they they were special, and they, you know, that when you got there, that was when Josh Allen came in, correct? No, I got there uh, actually two years before Josh got there. We drafted okay. Josh in 2018, so 16, that was still Rex Ryan. Um, we were a borderline, could have got to the playoffs, but we kind of folded as a team, wasn't good. And then Sean McDermott came in at 17. That's right. And we kind of punted. You know, people thought we were punting. We got rid of. Uh, Sammy Watkins, Marcel Darius, yeah. and he was just doing a whole culture shift. And uh, we had a lot of just, you know, uh, blue collar veteran players. Um, a lot of guys, you know, Mike Tolbert. Um, I think about guys like that from around the league. A lot of guys from Carolina that he had that was comfortable with. And we went out there, was able to make the playoffs and break a, break a 17 year uh, playoff drought. And a lot of that was just blue collar guys overachieving, coming together as, as, a, as, a, as a family because of the culture that Sean set up as far as love, respect, and trust. And the sum of our parts was greater than what we looked like individually. So um, it, it was that was a really special year because because of we broke that that 17 year playoff drought. Yeah, for sure. I remember when uh, when the Raiders broke theirs and and how how excited we were with that in in 2016. Um, and looking at you know looking at Buffalo and, and the Raiders, it's it's a very similar fan base, right? It's a blue collar fan base. Yeah. Uh, it's a wild. It's crazy. Raider Nation's insane. Bills Mafia is just as crazy. Um, you know, I, I've I've had the luxury of meeting a lot of members of Bills Mafia and great people. Uh, crazy about their team. Crazy crazy about you know the Bills. Uh, what do you think? Who do you think's crazier? Um, I'm going to say, uh, Bill's mafia is crazy, but it, it's a different crazy, you know, <laughs> Raider nation is almost crazy, like intimidating. Like, man, I don't <laughs> even know if I want to walk through here. Right. Where Bill's Bill's mafia is more like college crazy, right? Jumping off of tables and doing that type of stuff. So, and yeah. you know, and that's just kind of like the polarizing side. So I'm just going at that's, that's probably why it's a little different. So I would say just Bill's mafia just because it's stuff that I wouldn't do. You know, I'm not jumping off no bus through a through a, a foldable table uh, to party and have fun. You know, getting people squirted with ketchup and mustard. And it's just more of a college atmosphere, something much different than where when I think about Raider Nation and the black hole, where it's more about, you know, just that Oakland mentality, uh, intimidating type of, you know, just that, that hood mentality, you know, for the lack of right. a better comparison where you walk in there, you know it, People blazing up, like, woo, you know, you know, having a party, just like yeah. an old school, you know, uncles kicking it, aunties, it's just a different vibe, you know, it's more right, that vibe right. than that college atmosphere that you get in Buffalo. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing is, you know, I was out, I was out in Vegas for the for the home opener. Um, you know, obviously we couldn't have fans there, but uh, we did we did a live show out there, and you still have the same crowd. I mean, it's, you know, they they ask, you know, how does Raider Nation travel? And we travel well. 
And, you know, we were out in Vegas and we were turning up in Vegas. Um, But that's the thing is, you know, I think that that, that's the biggest thing is when you go when you go to a Raider tailgate, it doesn't matter if you're a fan or not. It doesn't matter if you if you like the Raiders, the Niners, whoever you're going to turn up. And it's it's just like a kickback. It's just like a cookout. Um, And everybody's welcome is as intimidating as Raider Nation is. Everybody's welcome. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Once you get to know the people, but that initial right. shock, you're like, ah, <laughs> right. I'm going to go over here. You and see then you start dudes with spikes on the jersey. Right, right. <laughs> then you start talking to folks. It's like, oh, okay, what's up, family? You know, it's just, then you break down some of that, you know, just that, uh, the presentation. Once you get past that, then it's, it's all yeah. love. It's family, yeah. Yeah, so so looking ahead at this matchup, we got, you know, you've got Derek Carr, who's a seven-year vet. You got Josh Allen, who's, you know, who's in his third year, I believe now. And, uh, you know, obviously two sep- two completely different styles of quarterbacks. Uh, yeah. Josh is Josh is a little more reckless. He runs a lot more. Derek's a lot more cautious, uh, a lot more conservative. He doesn't take a lot of chances, a lot of shots downfield. Um, you have the, you've had the ability to see both of these guys. You've had the ability to see both of them play. Uh, what do you see that are comparisons in their style? And then what do you see are, are, are big differences? Yeah, I mean, I think you kind of laid it out. Um, and they, 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 I don't even know if I can compare them because they are so different. Um, and it, for me, I guess I'll start with um, D.C. Um, I really love the person who D.C. is, the maturity level that he holds. Obviously, I was there with him um, just for one year, but uh, obviously his faith is a huge component of who he is. And so I related mm-hmm. with him a, a lot differently than I did with Josh, who's significantly younger. And just maturity level is different. So um, just the maturity level, the leadership qualities that he, that he possessed, I think mainly because of his faith in who he was. But for me, when I, when I think about uh, Derek's trajectory, I really think the injury he suffered in, I think I had left. So was it 16 he got hurt or 17? 16. He really has not been the same guy because when I was there, you could see the just the, the juices and the trajectory growing where – this this guy was going to be a a legitimate MVP candidate, and I believe in the beginning of sixteen. I mean, the cat was throwing the ball around, making big plays, had a big time season, and then once he got hurt, that kind of deflated the run. But I thought he was doing everything the right way, going the right direction, and then an injury occurred. Then you have a a, a coaching change, and he just hasn't been able to get back to where he once was for whatever reason. I mean, I, you know, from outside looking in, it looks like it's a relational issue. And when you have those struggles between coach and player, sometimes you're just not able to um, rise to your best ability just because of the environment you're in. And, you know, it's nobody's fault. It's just the way the relationship has kind of, at least from, you know, outside looking in, has kind of mm-hmm. developed. Um, and so, yeah, so now he is a little bit more cautious. Uh, maybe, you know, I know D.C. at times would, would overthink some things and get into his head where, hey, man, just let it go. We trust you. and We got your back. Um, so he is more, you know, thinking about checking it down versus maybe let me try to take this shot and make a play. But, you know, you also take away one of his best receivers, trade him away in Amari Cooper. You know, mm-hmm. some of that things that you see like with Deshaun Watson in Houston – and you see, yeah. it makes a difference. You know what I mean? It makes yeah, a big yeah. difference when you lose a guy like that from your offensive um, um, uh, uh, repertoire. And so um, that's where I kind of see him now. I haven't really been able to watch him as much as of late to really be able to dig into where he maybe has fallen short. Uh, but I know the person he is. I know he's working too, and I know what his intentionality is. And so, you know, hopefully they can work it out to where he can continue to develop and, you know, having a couple of wins under his belt, build, building that confidence to where he's now trusting guys, hey, let me let it go, and, and throw the ball around. Yeah. Um, and who knows what group is telling, hey, man, just take care of the ball, you know, make the smart throws, and we can't overcome turnovers. What you saw between their first two games and his last game versus the Patriots was the turnovers, right? Right. And not being able to overcome that, those type of things. Josh Allen, you know, is obviously a little is, – is earlier in his career. He's more of a, a Brett Favre-style quarterback uh, where he's going to slam that thing. He plays fearless. And like you said earlier, he all, he's walking that line of being um, fearless and reckless. And, uh, and I think that makes him great but also can put the team sometimes at a disadvantage because the moment – because he is so competitive – you try to make the what you think is the most competitive move, you know, run over a linebacker, 
stiff arm somebody else versus just sliding, let me get up and play the next down where over a period right. of time that can take a toll and you can expose yourself to creating turnovers and injury as we've kind of seen, especially in that first game where he had a couple of fumbles. So just things like that, as he matures, he'll continue to get better at which he has from year one to now year three. And guess what? They've added weapons around him. So now he's able to toss the ball around. You can't really, you know, peg peg on one guy. You know, Stefan did is obviously the number one, but then you got to worry about Smoke and then John Brown. You got to worry about uh, Cole Beasley working the middle, Dawson Knox, Devin Singletary has played really well. Uh, so he has a lot of weapons that he can throw the ball to. And Gabriel Davis, who's a rookie that's kind of came out of nowhere too. And so that's why he's putting up 300 plus yards, 400 yards, four touchdowns, just because they do a great job of, of taking advantage of matchups because they have the arsenal to do it. And so, he, but he's on the right trajectory. Um, I don't think he's ever going to be able to coach that competitive nature out of him where he just sometimes crosses the line, but I think they can live with it just because of what the the fruit of it, you know, majority of the time is, you know, throwing 400 for touchdowns right now. And so as long as he can kind of rein his own self back in, like he like he's done, especially last week after getting that personal foul and kind of losing his temper, but then coming right back down and leading the game winning drive. You can live with that. You know, you like to see that. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, you know, you still you you, you mentioned all those weapons, but you forgot to say one guy, Lee Smith, man. <laughs> Lee, <laughs> Lee, you know, Lee's still out there. Yeah, he is. I just talked to Lee. Lee's still out there doing man. it. Yeah, he's an old grumpy veteran, you know. Uh, <laughs> you gotta love Lee, man. Wherever he goes, people just gravitate towards him. I really enjoyed him in, in Oakland. Was glad that we got him because he brings that tough physicality. Um, and so you know, his role has changed. He hasn't played as much as he likes, but, I, you know, I love it. He caught him a touchdown last week, though. Yeah. You know, yeah. got in got in one play, got a touchdown out of it. So, uh, Lee he's still holding down. Yeah, he's good for a couple, you know, block throw him in there. So, uh, but he's doing a good job. You know, he's he's more of that leader, that uh, sound voice, as crazy as Lee is. You know, he's the, the voice of reason, just trying to get guys to understand the bigger picture and go in the right direction. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, we talked about talked about the team. We talked about the matchups. I'm going to put you on the spot here. You know, as a member of Bills Mafia, and I know that you're you lean a little more allegiance towards Bills Mafia. Uh, looking at this game, what do you uh, what do you think is going to be the outcome? Yeah, I mean, I do lean, lean. I'm still biased. I mean, I played four years there and I'm, you know, still pretty invested in the team. Um, and even if I wasn't, you know, just kind of looking at the way these teams match up. Um, I think offensively, obviously, Buffalo has the nod. They just have more firepower, uh, more weapons to throw the ball around. Um, so I think they're definitely, you know, the Raiders defense is going to struggle with trying to take take that away because you only get you only can match up and double so many guys. Um, and so if they want to win this game, it's going to have to be won um, by creating turnovers. You know, stripping Josh getting some tipping overthrows, getting some INTs to limit the amount of times that they can put touchdowns on the board, give themselves some short fields, um, and and obviously Derek in his offense, more opportunities to get into the end zone. Uh, when you look at Versi on the other side, um, I, I think the Raiders will be able to move the ball. I think if you look at the Bills defense, you know, over the last couple of years, they've been really good. But these first couple of games, especially with Tremaine Evans and Matt Milano, suffered some injuries early on and just never really having that. Uh, they just haven't been able to just that consistency in the run game. I think uh, Gruden and that offensive court and the offensive coordinator the scheme is going to really look at what the Rams did last week in that run game with mm-hmm. a lot of the jet motioning, the zones they do. They have similar concepts and really try to attack there and control the ball, uh, get the ball to one of your best athletes and allow him just to run the ball down the Bills' throat and say, hey, stop it. You know, but right now the Bills have been giving up, you know, five, six yards of carry. And if the Raiders can maintain that and control the ball and keep the game close, um, that's going to allow them to be able to have a chance to compete. And obviously when you get down to the red zone, making sure that you're scoring touchdowns and not kicking field goals. Right, right. Yeah, and you know Josh Jacobs is going to be ready for that, so. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. He's going to be ready for that. Um, You know, Waller is another guy they're going to have to look out for. Um, you know, so watching that matchup, you know, whether or not they have Matt Milano on Waller or if they bring in um, Dean Marlowe, who covers the tight end sometimes and seeing how they attack him, um, I think it's going to be a big telltale sign. You know, you got Renfro, you got Rig, uh, uh, Ruggs, 
Um, so they got some weapons, but the, the secondary, I think, is, is fairly solid. When you think about Tredavious White, um, uh, Micah Hyde, Jordan Poy, those guys do a great job. Levi Wallace showed up big last mm-hmm. week with an interception. And so he's growing, but if you're going to attack somebody, you may try to go at him. Um, but I really love Levi and what he's been able to do, and he's grown every single week. So I challenged him two weeks ago, hey, man, you need to get a pick, man. You had a chance, and you didn't get it. And that, last week he got one. So I see that helping his confidence. So it's going to be, I think, a solid game. It's luck, but whoever makes the more mistakes, you know. So whoever wins the turnover battle, I think it's going to come out. Um, but I'm going to rock with Buffalo in this one just because of how many <laughs> yards they've been putting up. I mean, it's just nobody stopped them yet offensively yeah. outside of themselves, you know, whether it was Josh fumbling the ball. Um, and that's really it. And maybe some bad throws here and there, but everybody has some bad throws. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be a real interesting, but I'm going to rock with Buffalo. And it's, mm, let me go with uh, – what I want to go, I'm going to go 30-17. 30-17. There you, there you go. You guys heard it here. 30-17. Make sure you, uh, after the game, you at Lorenzo. At <laughs> any, <laughs> no, I don't I'm need just no playing. ads, man. I don't need no I'm ads, just, man. Hey, you know, I'm just analyzing the game. But, yeah. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, brother. I'm just messing with you. But, no, so I really, I really appreciate you coming on. I know, I know you got a lot going on. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Uh, it's good chopping, with, chopping it up with you, uh, getting into it. Um, let these guys know where they can find you, uh, not to harass you, but let them know where they can find you and, and what you're up to. Yeah, for sure, Kenny. I appreciate it. Uh, Twitter, I'm at one man gang 97 uh, On IG, it's Lorizzo underscore John. And then you also can look me up at uh, LorenzoAlexander.org, which is my uh, – foundation based out of Oakland where we just serve a lot of uh, underserved kids, uh, kids that come from uh, homes like me, single parent homes, low, low economic, and just trying to provide resources um, and mentorship to help fill that gap and really help our community um, on that end as well as advocate for them um, as well. So, uh, you know, if you want to get involved, uh, look us up there. Yeah, and definitely uh, next time you have an event going on, let me know because I want to get involved because, you know, obviously uh, we do a lot of stuff. We've done a lot of stuff with the youth in Vegas, and, you know, I obviously want to do stuff in my back in my backyard. So uh, next time you have some, hit me up, let me know, uh, or tell House to hit me up. And, oh, for uh, sure. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely get together on there. All right, appreciate you, brother. All right, bro, thanks for coming on. Yeah, anytime. All right, later.